I want to create a horror game in the Godot engine, but do I really understand the horror game design, as I haven't played that many horror games? What sort of gameplay elements would I need? Stamina? Running? Health? Monsters? Something horror inducing. I would need a storyline to follow, maybe some hint papers scattered around the stage. So creating a horror game demo is exactly what I set out to do. I think the best way I can showcase the demo is to first show the gameplay. So basically the game starts off in this gloomy forest. There's some tentacles spewing around. Some weird sounds can be heard from the distance and we seem to be locked in this yard. Let's see what this text here shows us. Mwahaha, <laughs> I've locked you in the cursed yard. If you wish to wind a way out, search for a key and a combination. Beware the pets I let loose. Dr. Bufensmirth. So essentially it seems we have to escape this yard. Here is a lock and apparently we need to find a combination and a key for this one. Let's explore a bit. I seem to have a stamina meter up on the top left, which goes down when I press shift to run. What is that? Okay. There is definitely something in there. That sounds actually kind of fucking scary. Okay, so this is... This looks like a dungeon of some sort. Go in. I really, really don't like the sound that are coming coming from around here. Oh, fuck! Oh, what the fuck is that? No, 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 no. Okay, another paper. Let's pick that up. Nine. Okay, so it seems I get combination. Still need a few more papers. I, d I don't like this, I can't see anything. I don't like corners. Got a corner check, corner check. Let's follow the wall. Dude, this is so fucked. There's, I can't even see any... What the fuck was that? That is so close. Get me out of here, dude. Holy shit. No. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, fuck, he's here right there. Oh, fuck. Holy shit, dude. No fucking way, dude. Oh my god. It feels like he's right next to you. That is freaky. Okay, we found the key. Still need two more combination numbers. Fuck. Guys, this is a genuine reaction, by the way. I have not played this for real in a couple of days since finishing the death where the fuck is he I don't want to go there because that guy is somewhere here oh my god oh my god oh my god oh fuck that is so freaky dude oh fuck is he is he close is he close I don't like this what the fuck is he is he right behind there Oh my god, he's right there. Get me the freak out. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Oh my god, the fucking... Oh, why did I make this game so scary, man? Oh my god. The, f oh, the freaking sound design is free. It's like it's right next to you, that guy. Plus you can't see anything. Oh, fuck. 
Dude, I'm sweating. I'm absolutely sweating in here. Okay, I mean, obviously you get the point. You get the point of the gameplay now. It's basically collect the papers, avoid the scary dudes, wandering the forest and dungeon. Basically, it would be a piece of cake now for me to go find those because I know exactly where they are. So I'll let you go and play the demo on itch.io. I got the link in the description and you can see for yourself if you can find the remaining uh, two papers on there. I would love if someone played this little fun demo of mine. It was a great fun to develop this. Anyways, let's look at what consists of the technical side of this project. So I'm gonna teach you something about game development in Godot. So the first part I wanna talk about here is the level design of this demo. So the initial concept I had was to create this sort of a forest part, which is blocked off and then a indoor area with a maze type of a deal. This is what it ended up in the end. And the tool I used to actually create this level is the Cyclops level designer, which is an add-on for Godot 4 Cyclops level builder here on GitHub, also in the asset library. Basically, I looked in the asset library for tools which were for level building and this is what I ended up using with. This can be used pretty easily to block out levels to create this sort of a older retro type blocky levels. Maybe not the best for like if you're going for realism or fully modern type of deal, but for creating this older feel for the levels, it is a fantastic quick level building tool. Also for white boxing, amazing. Let me show you quickly how this works in Godot. So basically I add a Cyclops blocks node here. Then I just drag on the screen, selecting this, selecting block up here. I can drag on the screen and add a block. When I let go of the mouse, it will allow me to alter it on the vertical sense changing the height of it. Let's just go one block down and there we go. We got a little area of here. Now, if I wanna add some more part here, let me go over here and I can change the snapping distance. Let's just put it to one fourth of a uh, coded unit. Is that meter? I'm not sure. On here, left, on the right bottom, I will change the material that I'm applying to the block. Then I'll just drag on this. Now we're selecting only one fourth of the block as the snapping point. So I can create this thinner part on here. Let's get a little wall going on here. And here we can see, I'm gonna actually also edit it on the wall itself, which is pretty handy. There we go. Now, if I wanna actually edit one of these blocks, I'm gonna select it with the block. Now it's selected. Then let me go over here to press face. Now I'm gonna edit the individual faces. For example, I can move this here and now I've got myself this sort of slope on here. This uh, can be actually used to create quite a complex uh, geometry for a stage. And let's say I wanna actually change the material of this individual face here. I'm gonna select the face here, go over to this materials blur here and double click on a material and it will change only that face type on that, on that particular face. Well, enough about the level design for now. As we can see here, the atmosphere in this area is very dark, gloomy, and it's got this fog around it. Let me show how I used the world environment to change the atmosphere to, well, look like this. So basically, this is what the scene looks like without any of the post-processing effects on the world environment. We have got a pretty downcast directional light with a slight yellow tint on the color and very low energy of 0.14. Then when I go to the world environment, I can look at some of the effects I'm using. We have got a sky with a pretty low energy multiplier. Then I can enable some of these effects. We have got a fog 
which is said, well, it's very dark with this fog. And then I also have a volumetric fog, which adds the foggy feel to the level. This uh, normal fog I'm using here is really just to make the level darker and affect the overall visibility of the player. But then this volumetric fog adds the actual fogginess to the scene. And finally, I've got the SDF global illumination, which adds a little bit for dynamic to the dynamic feel to the lighting of the scene. And also adds a little bit of a nicer lighting effect with the volumetric fog, again, and enhancing the effect of the light interacting with the fog, which I think creates pretty nice atmosphere. And well, talking about atmosphere, Another major part of that is the sound design. Let me get over to you with my sound design expert. He'll tell you all about it. Basically, the audio design in the demo is separated to three layers. First one being ambience, second one character sound effect, and lastly UI. This is how the ambience player code works. Basically, I have an array of different ambience tracks and if a track is not playing at the moment, we pick one from the array and start playing it with its own varied level. This means I always have some ambience going and it's a little randomized what track is going to be playing at any moment. The second level is the character sound effect. This includes the walking and running sound effects for the player and for the enemies we have this breathing sound effects and the claw sound effect. This being a audio stream player 3D, we can also hear when the monster is getting closer to us, again creating this more of a scarier atmosphere for the game. The last level being the UI, for that I got button sound effects like these, and this paper sound effect for when I pick up the papers. All right, taking a look at the data systems in the puzzle here, I would love to talk about all of this code for hours, but I'm just gonna keep it very simple. On the stage, I have got the system node under which I have a paper data. These are all just completely normal nodes. And here in the code, I've got a var of papers array, which holds five bools, each for one of the papers in the game. Each of these pickables then is a paper node on the scene. We can take a look at here. And one of these, uh, each of these has a export variable for paper index, which then references one of these in here. When we pick one of these up, we can go here and see that we are setting the data papers array with the paper index to be true. Now we know that we have picked up the paper itself. Then over on the hood side, we are actually referencing a paper viewer hood here, where we show the paper with the paper index. We can see that on the page viewer here, where we have got the paper image, and then we just uh, change the texture for this uh, particular texture rect to correspond to the correct paper index. Then on the left, we got the side view where we can actually scroll through these when we open this hood with tab. Another piece of hood we have is the itself the puzzle screen on the lock. This has got just a background texture rect, which is uh, itself the whole scene, which is like pre-rendered there. And we got a couple uh, rich text labels for showing the different combination numbers on the lock. We have got a bunch of buttons, one for solving the puzzle, one for inserting the key to the keyhole. And when we insert it, we obviously show this uh, texture rect, which is this key here and play this sound effect. And here on the uh, lock viewer UI lock code, we actually hold data for the puzzle, including these lock combination and correct combination arrays here, key inserted variable, and all of the UI functionalities. Normally I would like to separate the data and UI side of the functionality 
but here it's just the same code as the puzzle is entirely contained within this one scene structure here so it's okay here I got some basic menu code then we got a turn combination code which basically takes an index and then changes this number one up if it goes all the way up to 10 we just reset it back down to one then we play an asafax and set the string there to showcase the actual number on the rich text label and we have got a insert key function where we also check the data for if we have gotten the key paper on the stage then we can actually insert the key here and the open lock function here checks if the key is inserted and we have got the com correct combination on the combination lock there then we will actually win the game go over to the win screen here I think that just about covers it for the UI. Let's look at one more interesting part, which is the enemy. I'm gonna keep this real nice and simple. This is a structure body 3D, and basically the movement is set with pathfinding from navigation agent 3D. The main functions for this one is setting a target position. Basically on this set random wonder position, I set a random position within a radius of 30 meters around the enemy and then I just set the agent target position to be that position. Then over on the physics process uh, function, I can go over and get the agent dot get next path position. With that I can set a directional vector towards that path position and just set the movement towards that. Then the enemy will go about doing his movement. We have also got a enum for movement mode, which is wonder and chase. Obviously when we see the player, we enter the chase mode. Here I have a player C area, which is around seven and a half meters uh, in radius and a jump scare area, which is a smaller one. And if the player actually gets inside this, we will jump scare the player with a loose screen over here which is a scary scary screen and going over to the main scene i'm gonna take a look at the navigation region here basically it's all of these blue areas it says areas for the navigation agents that they can path through it will block that it's not going to go to a wall it's not going to go over any of these trees and so on to actually create this, I have went over to the navigation region node here, added a navigation mesh resource. Here on the geometry setting, I have set the source geometry mode to be group with children and group name to be terrain. Then anything that I want to be on the terrain, I've set to the group of terrain. Clicking on the node, going over to the node tab groups, and just adding a terrain group to it. Similarly, that is also done for each of the trees and details on the scene. Then going over to the navigation region and hitting bake nav mesh up there to bake the navigation mesh. And I think that will be everything I will be talking about this. One thing I did not end up covering on this video is using wiggle bone for the tentacles. So if you want to hear something about that, leave me a comment or something. Anyways, the demo is on itch.io. I'd love if you check it out there. And I also put the code to GitHub if you want to see any of the code or look at it, learn something about it. Fantastic day to you all. Thank you for watching. School is out.